Um, yeah, today, <laughs> this is a really hard video for me to do. Um, right before I, I hit go live, I was like, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. It's the weirdest feeling ever because I'm usually really pumped about doing live videos. And as the, the number count of who was waiting and who was watching grew, I got even more nervous. So here we are. I'm doing it. I'm doing the damn thing. Today, this video is about me. And if you want to get off now, cool. That's great. <laughs> it's not about universal truth, uh, even though there will be some pockets in there. Uh, it's not about conspiracies. It's not about aliens. It's about me. It's about Elizabeth. It's not about Elizabeth April. So I decided to come on uh, as, as me, as Elizabeth. No makeup, no hair. My hair is so greasy right now, so good thing you can't smell me over there. Um, I needed to do this for myself and for the community. So, hi. I feel like you know my mission. And that is so important to me. But I feel like in so many ways you don't know me. And so I wanted to introduce you to me today. <laughs> so, hi. My name's Elizabeth. I'm 31 years old. And um, I'm going to tell you all about who I am today. I was born and raised in Waterloo, Ontario. So I am a Canadian, good old Canadian girl. Um, I went to university at McMaster University. And I did a double major in political science and communications. And uh, I actually graduated with honors at the top of my classes, which is extremely impressive because I almost failed grade three. I have never been um, a school person. I still have problem with a problem with English a lot of the time, especially spelling and grammar. And uh, I am known for butchering names, so that's definitely one of my special talents in this world. Um, a couple of things that I am. I am a wife to my beautiful wife, Natasha. I am a mother to my wonderful, almost 10-month-old son, Bodhi. I am a motorcycle rider. I also consider myself an artist. I love painting. Uh, just paint on a canvas. Sometimes I love sculpting. And, uh, oh yeah, and I also talk to aliens. Um, as well. <laughs> some of my biggest challenges in this life, and I did write some, some notes down so I can be a bit structured on this. Um, so my parents divorced when I was seven. I would say it wasn't like a huge challenge for me, especially since it was very obvious at that age, for me at least, that they weren't happy. I mean, there was a lot of fights often. And I really think now, looking back, that my parents were really only together to, to bring about my brother and I, you know? And I think a lot of people can um, also agree that maybe their, their parents were also just here to, to bring you about, which is beautiful. And I was also super lucky because after my parents divorced, they both ended up finding the love of their life. And they've been married to that person pretty much ever since the divorce. And I love my step-parents. All right. Um, another really big life challenge, one that I'm actually still, I'm still healing to this day. Uh, I did suffer sexual abuse when I was younger, from around 6 to 11. And of course, there's a scale for these things. Um, but it did impact me, and I didn't realize how much it impacted me back then. After, after I kind of told my parents about what happened, um, luckily I was very supported. They tried to put me in therapy. I definitely wasn't ready for therapy at that time, uh, but they were really supportive on that. Um, what happened was I actually became really over-sexualized at a young age. Like we're talking 12, 13, like I kind of became boy obsessed 
I ended up getting my period really young, I think because of the exposure that I had back then. And um, I believed, even though I grew up in a really two very beautiful, loving families who I would say definitely for the 90s did all of the right things to raise both me and my brother, um, I felt like the only reason why I was ever loved or even liked was for what I could give, which you know, back when you're like 13, you don't think like, oh, it's sex, but you know, it's, it's a part of me, right? It's something that I have as a woman, you know, so that's the over-sexualized part. For a very long time, you know, I was like that and thought that the only good I could give or the only reason why I'd be liked was, was for my body or something physical. So that's a part that, you know, I really don't ever mention, right? Once again, today I'm here to introduce you to Elizabeth, not Elizabeth April, not the story of the spiritually gifted kid. We're talking about the human today, hence the no makeup and the very greasy hair and very smelly body, which we're not going to get into. Um, okay, I've been on a healing journey with a lot of the uh, sexual abuse that happened when I was a kid, and specifically for me, it was almost one year, actually it was, it was one year to the month that I decided to get therapy. For the first time in my life, I decided at 30, 29, 30 year, 29 uh, years old that I was ready. And so I found the right one for me and found this wonderful woman. Um, and she's actually uh, from New Zealand. So she's just such a lovely soul. And, uh, and I told her, I said, before I bring a child into this world, I want to heal sexual trauma. And we've been, we did that. There was this huge, incredible breakthrough right before giving birth. So it was one year exactly um, that I got to celebrate that. So I've been on that spiritual healing, sexual trauma healing journey for about three years now. And uh, I, I want to continue that healing. And I also believe that that happened when I was younger so that I could learn this, um, this lesson and then share that with the world. But we're not going to be talking about mission work. We're talking about human stuff. Okay, uh, another really big life challenge was I had a really bad breakup when I was 18 years old and I was just really suffering, I think, a lot with feelings of being misplaced and um, not having any friends or not having a community. I was 18, I just moved away to a new town, um, didn't know anyone and just felt a lot of like loss, loneliness, and of course with this bad breakup, it didn't help. And from that, I ended up having a lot of health complications. So one thing that I had often was strep throat. Uh, I think one, one winter I had strep throat like five times, and I begged the doctors to take out my tonsils. I'm like, just take them out, please. Um, and they're like, we don't do that anymore. Like, that's not a thing we do. And I realized that I was under communicating, right? I was under expressing myself. Um, and then I started getting other weird symptoms, like, um, oddly enough, all of the blood vessels in under my fingernails, uh, started like, I don't know if like blowing up or expanding. I don't know. It was really gross, like little tiny red dots. Didn't know what it was. Um, I have Raynaud's as well, which means I lose a lot of circulation in my, my hands and my feet. Um, and then all of a sudden, I started getting um, inflammation, like crazy inflammation, to the point where I couldn't see my knees or my ankles. And I went to the doctor. I told him all my symptoms. We did a bunch of different blood work, and he said that I had lupus. Um, and so that was really devastating. And he said I was really young to even be diagnosed with something like that. Um, of course, I was able to put it into remission, and I have, knock on wood, have not had any symptoms since then. Uh, it took me about six months of really deep diving into things like trans meditation, gratitude, inner healing, and cutting cords with, you know, disharmonic energies in my life, including my ex. Um, so that was a really big challenge, but a really, really incredible breakthrough, not to mention around that time, I also got abducted by aliens. So that was fun. <laughs> it was a lot on my plate at that time, which happened to be about 12 years ago, which apparently is some sort of astrological cycle that I'm going through right now. Here we are. Um, so after I got abducted at 18, like here I am, you know, 18, 19, I like moved into a house. I was like starting to make friends in university. And when I came back from this meditation retreat, I went to my, my roommates and I said, yeah, like, I think I got abducted. 
And my one roommate, I'm not going to name names. I don't, I don't think she watches any of my content, but um, she said, she said, like, by aliens? You think you got taken by aliens onto a ship? And I said, yeah. And it was, like, really scary. And I could really use some, like, support or help or, like, a hug. I don't know. And she laughed and she went around to not only just all of my other roommates, but all of our friends and basically said that I had lost my mind um, and needed some serious help because I truly believed that I got abducted by aliens. Um, so that that bullying kind of dynamic and situation, uh, that really affected me. That was a big challenge for me. I mean, talk about having an experience, needing a soft place to land and feeling totally outcasted, right, and alone. Um, these days, some of my, my greater challenges is I really do suffer from anxiety. Like I had a pretty good handle on anxiety pretty much my whole life. Maybe when I was a kid, I was like extra anxious just because of the energy and not knowing how to, to navigate and manage some of those extra sensory abilities. Um, but since becoming a mother, I have like extra anxiety and a lot of it circulates around like, you know, what if I drop him or what if you know, someone else like drops him or what if he has an allergic reaction or what if he chokes on food or what if he he's crawling on a hard surface and hits his head, which pretty much not all of the above have happened. But like, yeah, as a as a parent, like that all happens and and you manage it and you deal with it. But man, the anxiety is intense and um, I haven't figured out anxiety yet. You know, I feel like I'm just at the this the tip of the iceberg with it. And it's something that I want to really work on healing within myself. And thank you, Doug, for that support. Um, and then eventually, I actually want to write a whole book on anxiety. But I've got to learn it first, and then I can teach it. But that's kind of what I'm working on. But I'm also working on a lot of, a lot of other things. Um, 2024 has been so challenging. <laughs> I mean, we're literally a month and a half into 2024 and it has been unlike any other year I have experienced. <laughs> and thank you, Angelo, for that support as well. Um, a lot of ego deaths, you know, even 2020 was nothing compared to 2024. And I can't even like put a finger on what exactly it is, but a lot of internal challenges, a lot of ego deaths, which is why I'm showing up here as a human today. Um, so my recent ego death, you guys are going to laugh maybe to yourselves. Um, <laughs> so my recent ego death was a week ago. And I just recently went to Los Angeles to uh, speak at a conference. Thank you, Sean, for that super chat. Um, yeah, it's really cool how there's like a lot, like the last three super chats were men. And I just think that's beautiful. I don't know. There's an energy in that, that masculine um, of like support and space holding. Anyway, uh, so I went to a conference, Conscious Life Expo, and I love this conference. Like, wow, it just feels like coming home. It feels like reuniting with family. And I feel like if we all got together, like in person, it, it would feel the exact same way. But the week leading up to this conference, um, I kind of broke down and I thought that no one was coming to my workshop and part of the reason why I thought that, uh, well, first of all, I was just having a rough time. And if you're a member on the community, you know that I bawled my eyes out last weekend because I had just overgiven way too much and I wasn't showing up enough for myself. And so anyway, and so then I had another ego death because the, the ticket sales of the workshop I had five, I had six ticket sales for my workshop, right? A week before the workshop. And five of those six ticket sales were our test orders. <laughs> so we bought five tickets and I'm like, only one person is coming to my workshop. And I thought, I, I went through so many different emotions like, 
people are, you know, they're sick of me. I would be sick of me. It's just, it's too much EA. It's too much content. It's too much of my face. It's too much. I mean, I wouldn't even want to show up to my own workshop. <laughs> and um, yeah, so that I went through that, like literally two days before leaving. Uh, of course, not realizing that the affiliate tracking was not working and my entire workshop of three, three or four hundred seats was actually completely sold out. <laughs> but I had resigned myself to being okay with only having maybe two people and my family in the audience. Um, and it was a it was a packed house. I mean, standing room only. It was crazy. It was insane. And what's so beautiful is I was chatting with the volunteer um, of of my workshop, right? She was like standing by the door as people were coming in. And uh, she had no she had no idea who I was, right? And I'm like, oh, well, it's really divine that you're here as this volunteer. And I told her, I'm like, two days ago, I thought no one was coming. Like, I really thought that like two people had signed up for this. And she's like, really? Girl, she's like, girl, look at the room. Like, this room is packed. Like, this is like the busiest workshop I've seen so far. And I'm like, yeah. And then she said something like, you know, it's really beautiful to experience these moments of challenge or insecurity because, you know, it hum it humbles us, right? It allows us to um, step into every moment without expectation and then show up and be so beautifully surprised and grateful for everyone else showing up, right? So, yeah, and of course, you know, I had a, a friend, Megan, also kind of talk me off a ledge um, <laughs> a couple of days beforehand. And uh, yeah, she said some really nice, empowering things. So that was my recent ego death. And, um, and yeah, I just had to like mention that. Uh, thank you, Linda, for that support. So I, I want to go over my likes and dislikes as a human, all right? I love rivers and lakes. It's like my sanctuary to just to be in a forest with a river, lakes. I also am obsessed with waterfalls. Um, so that's kind of my beautiful sanctuary. I'm not a big fan of oceans, which I didn't, I didn't know, right? Prior to living in LA, I'd never really lived by an ocean, so it was not really a big deal. But I was, you know... 20 to 45 minutes, depending on traffic, away from Venice Beach. And I went maybe three times. Not a fan of oceans. Who knew? We took a cruise once and Nat had a bunch of like credit card points. So we, we had a free cruise, which was awesome. Didn't really love it. Neither one of us liked being kind of stuck <laughs> in prison on the ocean. It wasn't really a big thing. Probably will never do it again. Um, anyway, um, I love active meditation and yeah, I do like non-active meditation as well. Just like sitting and like, you know, quieting my mind, but I love doing like yoga meditation. I love meditating when I'm riding my motorcycle. Um, also just driving. I also meditate while cooking. So I love really a lot of active meditation. Um, I love Lego. I don't know if you knew this, but I'm obsessed. Well, maybe not obsessed, but I really do enjoy Lego. Really all the different kinds of sets. I'm not a huge fan of clutter. So I usually like build a Lego set. I'll have it out for a while and then I'll like put it away. So we're going to have lots of Lego for Bodhi once he's um, out of the realm of taking a piece and swallowing it. So that might be a couple years. Um, what else? Um, I love original art. If you come to my house, there is original art everywhere. Like we're talking paint on a canvas because, um, yeah, because it has a vibe, right? There's a vibe to it. Um, I also love video games. So one of my favorite video games back in the day was The Sims. It was like a simulation. I got to play a life within a life. Um, now I feel like that's really boring because I just like living my own life. Um, I also love all music, but I do not have a musical bone in my body. So I will clap off beat. I am completely tone deaf, but it doesn't stop me from singing and dancing, 
you know, my heart out. Um, I'm especially a big fan of EDM. That's probably my favorite music. But I also love the classics, classics like ACDC and Queen and CCR, um, Pearl Jam, all that great stuff. Uh, my greatest insecurities are my skin would probably be my number one. I have always had eczema and acne. So I got both ends of the spectrum. <laughs> Seriously. And even now that I don't really have crazy breakouts, as you can see, my skin is always, um, it's always blotchy. It's always kind of red, especially in the face. And, um, you know, I, I always joke with my brother. He has like perfect skin. Seriously. I think he's gotten one pimple in his entire life. Uh, but I wanted to show up today without makeup because this is me six and a half days of the week. <laughs> because that one half of a day is the live video that I do on Mondays, right? You see where I'm getting at? Uh, my hair is also an insecurity just because it's like, it's thin and flat and it's constantly greasy. Like I will shower in the morning and it is greasy at night and I've tried all the shampoos. I don't need any suggestions on my skin or my hair because I've tried them all. So thank you in advance for all of your comments, but um, I've accepted both my skin and my hair, and uh, I'm just writing it out, so um, I'm fine with it. One of my other big insecurities is my nose. I never talk about it, but it's pointy. So from the front, I look fine, but from the side, it it reminds me of like a pointy witch's nose. So it drives me nuts, and you will rarely ever see me post side profile. Um, <laughs> photos. I'm going to show you right now, okay, because I'm trying to be vulnerable and this is what this video is all about. Okay, ready? Do you see how pointy it is? Anyway, uh, my height is a huge insecurity uh, as well. Um, I'm like such a little person. I'm five nothing and it bothers me because I'm used to being like a seven foot tall alien and this is like a cruel joke from the universe that I'm such a little human so I actually forget about how short I am until I see myself in photos beside normal height people. And it's shocking every time. Like I'm 31 and for 31 years, I'm still surprised that I look like a 12 year old compared to other adults. Yes, I have a short complex. All right. Um, I am currently enjoying Right now, I am binge watching a show on Discovery called Bering Sea Gold. It's like basically a bunch of people in Nome, Alaska, and they, they go out and they dig for gold. So my favorite TV shows are typically like reality mixed with nature. So I love um, Alone, Naked and Afraid. Like I just wish there was like a million of those seasons. So that's kind of my vibe. I really dislike any TV shows related to UFOs, paranormal, um, ghost hunting, past life experiences, life after death, which is funny because my wife loves all of those TV shows. And it's, it's interesting. So the one day she was on Discovery Plus and, uh, and she, uh, she ended up watching this, um, this show called UFO Witness. And she's like, oh my God, babe, did you know you were on this show, UFO Witness? And she stumbled, happened to stumble across my episode. I'm like, yeah, babe. Yeah, but I won't watch it. I can't watch that stuff. I don't know. It's like nails on a chalkboard for me. It's just like, but I also never watch my own videos. I never listen to my own podcasts. Once I content create something, it is, it is like nails on a chalkboard for me to go back. So even my book, the first time I ever read my own book was when I read it for the audiobook, and I've never read it again since. So don't, don't ask me why I'm like that. Um, I just listened to two audiobooks. So I listened to the Elon Musk biography um, audiobook. It was really fascinating. I've got some things I want to mention, but I'm not going to mention them here. And then I'm also in the middle of a really cool kind of like sci-fi book. It's called If This um, If This Book Exists, You're in the Wrong Universe. And it was just really cool. Kind of like, sci yeah, it was definitely sci-fi. Um, currently, I am learning two huge life lessons. One is patience. 
And the other is trust. I realize that I can be an impatient person and make rash decisions. Um, and I think patience and trust really go hand in hand. You know, it's about trusting in the divine timing and trusting in the divine flow. And um, <laughs> and I think a big part of trust is, is having the patience um, and a big part of patience is having trust. So that's kind of what my human is learning right now. Couple of fun facts. I love vacuuming and organizing. I think organizing cupboards and, you know, the closet and getting rid of a bunch of stuff, giving it away, that's like therapy. That is totally free therapy to me. Um, at least once a week, I will um, organize and clean out my fridge, check expiry dates. I'm just, I just really enjoy it. Um, I leave floss picks everywhere. My wife will tell you. Uh, I don't know what it is, but even the other day I was folding laundry and just a floss pick just fell out of the laundry. Um, I don't, just don't ask me why, but I do like flossing my teeth and um, they happen to just wind up around the house. Uh, what else? I am very much so an A-type personality. I am very structured, uh, but I am learning a lot about flexibility um, also another fun fact, I've never been with a woman up until I met and married my wife. I had never dated a woman. I had never saw women as attractive, even remotely attractive. I never kissed a woman and, um, yeah, I definitely never touched a boob before. So that was new, not to mention I don't have my own. So, <laughs> um, that was very new. And it's funny, I learned about this new term the other day, not that I believe in labels, but there's a term called pansexual, and it actually sounds like a scary term, um, but I, I believe the definition of pansexual is that you're not necessarily attracted to a gender, you're just attracted to a person, and that, I would say that that's me, you know, um, because we're all just, I feel like everyone's pansexual, right, if that's the definition, like, I don't know. Anyway, okay. Um, don't hate me on that one. All right. Um, what else? I'm a homebody. I'm a cancer, so I just love being home. My human design is manifester. My life path number is nine, which is very much so like dedicated to giving back and humanity. Uh, my sun sign is cancer. I'm also a Leo rising and a Scorpio moon. I don't know much about what those mean, but I definitely feel like a lot of that Leo energy. Um, it's kind of like the fire in me. Uh, my favorite food is all of it. So I really do love all food. There, It's very rare that I have a food that I dislike. Mushrooms. You know what? Don't like mushrooms. It's a texture thing. Um, what else? Uh, also, fun fact, I have a really special relationship with both my dad, my mom, and my brother, all individually. So I feel really grateful that I'm, I'm really close to my family. Uh, my guilty pleasures, chocolate, guilty pleasure, speeding. I love to go fast. I really do love adrenaline, whether it be on a motorcycle or running really fast or on a skateboard or um, what else? On a snowboard. Love it. Love going fast. Another guilty pleasure, blame my wife, Diet Coke. Terrible for you. I know. Don't even talk to me about as <laughs> aspartame. Um, I get it. I don't drink it often, but I do every once in a while, and I'm starting to sweat now. Okay. Uh, also, some guilty pleasures. Buying new crystals. Definitely a guilty pleasure. Um, yeah, you don't know this, but smoking the occasional joint. Guilty pleasure. All right. I'm Canadian. What can you, what can you, <laughs> what do you expect? Um, also another guilty pleasure, gardening naked. Shit just got real. All right, now we're talking about nudity. Yeah, so um, yeah, we we have <laughs> in Canada, we, no neighbors can see in and I absolutely love on a bright and sunny day being in the in the garden naked. That is my that is my true guilty pleasure in life. May bring me a diet coke on ice and and maybe a bit of chocolate and now we're talking. All right, uh, my current focus, and I'm almost done, you guys. Honoring my human is a huge current focus, hence why I'm doing this right now. I know it's not my usual content. Go ahead and uns unsubscribe. I don't care because this is something that I really feel like I have to do. Um, listening to my intuition. I just feel like I'm pushing more rather than waiting and listening. So I'm really focusing on just listening more. 
I'm um, showing up for Bodhi and Nat. Um, this has just kind of always been my focus since being a mom. Uh, being more vulnerable, hence, here we go, no makeup, no, no hair done. Uh, and saying no more often is something really, really important. So, you know, my focus always is bringing as much knowledge and empowerment to humanity as possible so that we can shift the world together. Remember, I am an alien having a very human experience. And although how you see me most of the time is in that form of teacher, that's not who I am 95% of my day, 95% of my week, right? I'm a human. These are my likes. These are my dislikes. These are my pet peeves. This is my day to day. And I really felt like today I needed to show up for my human so that you got to get to know me a little bit better. So, hi, I'm Elizabeth. I'm an alien having a human experience just like you. Thanks so much for being here. Bye for now.